Hello and welcome to episode 2 of Playing for Set Pieces. We are of course with Esbjerg in the Danish Superliga. Last time you saw us was our first or second European game as it were, the second leg against Shikura. And uh, of course we came out winners from that which was fantastic. After that we went up against OB and we managed a fairly significant 2-0 win because uh, OB have been doing quite well but we're picking up a lot of yellows because of my aggressive tactics so... I'm having to uh, step back on that a little bit. Um, interestingly enough, there's something on show here. Uh, if we have a look at Austin, he's not been fantastically uh, consistent. And the problem is, that is the same... I mean, admittedly, he plays better as a defensive midfielder, perhaps. But in terms of a centre-half and in terms of our other centre-halves as well... They are not all being particularly consistent. You'll get a great game and then you'll have an iffy game. So certainly in terms of how I need to uh, you know, develop things in the team, more consistent centre-halves is definitely going to be part of it. So nevertheless, um, I said nevertheless again. I was trying not to say it this episode. Uh, after that, we went up against Rijeka, um, and that was the third qualifying round, leg one. Away, we were they were favourites, and uh, sure enough, they beat us 1-0. Um, just a single goal from Mr. Gorgon, who, uh, yeah, he had a fantastic game. I meant to scout him. Let me scout him again. He's a little bit beyond the sort of money we would spend. Um, wasn't a bad performance on our part, um, but uh, again, Annie Embe is one of these players who will have a great game and then have an awful game, um, and his development's been a bit... Iffy. In fact, it seems like it's only he's only improving on the things that are uh, part of our playing for set pieces schedule. So that might be a message for me in terms of what I need to do. Okay, so after that, it was AAB where we drew one-one, which actually again was not a bad result. Um, should have been one-nil. I was disappointed to concede a goal in ninety-four minutes, but. Again, it wasn't bad because they were doing better than us. They were stronger. And uh, once again, Tranberg, just a poor game. And yeah, that's kind of a kind of a thing at the moment is inconsistent centre-half. So does need work. So after the AAB, we had the uh, leg two in the third qualifying round against Rijeka and we overturned them. Um, we came out at home and just hammered them 4-1 it was a really really good and it included a missed penalty from poor old uh Paran Chivilli, who <laughs> yeah that affected his performance unfortunately but nevertheless we came away overall 4-2 victors um and that put us through to the next round which was against Eintracht Frankfurt now if you notice when the last time you saw us, you obviously knew that the leg two game of Shakura is here and OB. All of these games have all been played within August. So it's just added another four games to August that uh, we didn't have. So August is looking a lot bigger than it was because of that. Um, we then had another league game against Lingby where we drew 2-2. Lingby are a, a, you know, a fairly decent sized team. Um, but it was a it was a collapse on our point. We were 2-0 up, um, you know. After 51 minutes, in fact, and coming out at half time, we were just dominant. And then, well, as you can see, we conceded two within three minutes um, from Jesper Christiansen. And, you know, it was just, just, I mean, you can see 18 shots, seven on target. It just, we weren't having it. In fact, 63% of possession. There's no real reason why that should have happened other than that sort of collapse. I mean, the centre halves didn't play badly. In fact, the whole defence didn't. But as you can see, Hoiberg. Didn't have a great game, so whether he was to blame for that. It looks like I didn't make any subs, and admittedly I didn't, because, I mean, you can see where we conceded up until that point. We were solid, and then boom, boom, two inside of three minutes. So that was that. Still got a point, which is good, and uh, I'm still on target for what the uh, board wants, so, which we'll go into in a minute. Then we had the fourth qualifying round, leg one, against Eintracht Frankfurt. Well, I mean, they're a much larger team than us. There's no question about it. Um... That was their away visit. They're in the Bundesliga. I've not got the Bundesliga loaded, so you can't actually see how well they're doing. But they're on track Frankfurt. Ooh. Let me just go back to... Let's try it there. Yeah, three and a half stars national reputation. What are you going to do? So, yeah, we got it. We got hammered. Even though Paranashavili had a great game, he really did. 
Um, everybody else didn't again. Halstein Brinch this time, still having the same problem. Brinch is one of those that uh, I feel like he should be better than what he is. But there's certain consistency issues. 6.5, 7.1, 6.8, 6.7. He's not quite as bad and then back to 6.6. So we have three decent games in a row. But nevertheless, as I say, in that sort of situation, that's when you need players at their best and when both your centre-halves are playing rubbish and well in fact Brinch came on I think I know he didn't he came off and was replaced by Austin but anyway it's yeah just hammered they were much better than us all round and the fact that our next leg is the away leg which comes on Thursday the 29th of August as you can imagine they're clear favourites and we're four to one to uh, overturn the 3-0 deficit. Well, 4-1 to to win, I guess, and it's probably like 100-1 uh, to one to overturn a 3-0 uh, deficit. So never, So, I'm not coming back for that game. What I am going to do instead is show you Silkeborg in the league because you haven't seen the league game yet. So, in terms of uh, how we're doing in the Superliga, in, in terms of, I guess, consistency and performance, we are second place in terms of games without losing, which is a nice place to be behind Michelin, which is nice. FC Copenhagen equal to us. Um, we're in third place as far as our pass completion ratio is concerned, which is 78%, which I really like. Games scored in a row, we're in second place with five, and our net transfer spend is uh, third. But when you consider that AAB and Copenhagen you know, have spent less than 200 grand each, and we've spent less than 10 grand, not sure what that says. Um, goals from indirect free kicks. This was the thing we were going to look at, and I will do it by going into these stats here. If we go down past the form to goals from corners, um, obviously, you know, we're training for set pieces, we're playing for set pieces, but so far we have scored no goals from set pieces, uh, from corners, sorry. Um, joint 11th, I guess. Six matches, eight goals. What's that again? In position sixth. But yeah, we've not scored from a single corner. As far as goals from direct free kicks, there's only two teams that have managed one, which is AGF and Nordschland, who have both scored one each. Um, and of course, we are still on zero. However, if you look for index, indirect free kicks, we're in second place. Only Michelin are above us with three goals from indirect free kicks. Um, admittedly, they've had 18 goals, two to our eight, so that's ten more goals. Um, but we have managed to score two from uh, indirect free kicks, so that's nice. That's that's a, a good place to be, I guess. I mean, obviously, by the time the end of the season comes, it will really tell us whether or not this is uh, working or at least started to work. I mean, to bear in mind, this is the first season. We've still got to get used to the training schedule and maybe adjust it if it needs it. Um, I haven't had any complaints yet, so it's certainly not too intense. But it might be that it's not intense enough or indeed that it's not broad enough. I have tried to make sure that I cover all areas of training, but obviously the focus being um, playing for set pieces and the, the relevant stats. But We'll see. I mean, it's it's uh, it's very early to judge. Um, and obviously, in terms of recruitment of players, I haven't um, purchased anybody, and I certainly haven't, you know, um, found anyone specifically um, with high abilities for playing for set pieces that's on our target list yet. Um, we're looking. Um, obviously, if we actually go to the club vision, it's a good time to look at it. Um, one of the things is that the players... They want us to use the uh, youth system as much as possible. So I am obviously trying to find younger players as much as I can. Um, but in terms of their overall um, happiness with my performance, I do have a B, which is great. Um, they were happy with the Euro stuff um, and very happy with the Calsa signing. Um, he's had a couple of games. He's actually not done bad. Again, he's, he's here for development more than anything else. Um, and to add a bit of depth because we were a bit short. But, of course, he doesn't have long throws, doesn't have free kick taking. There ain't much in the way of corners, so he's not a taker. That being said, he is six foot tall. He hasn't got a great jumping reach, um, and his heading is the same as his jumping reach. Um, so he's not really a target either. Um, long shots is definitely a knot. Um, so, no, he's just a uh, fullback. <laughs> Realistically, he doesn't fit in either the targets or the takers uh, 
position, which is, you know, is obviously not what I'm trying to do ultimately. But we needed the depth, and it is what it is. So I'm spending the season, hopefully, finding the right players to try and sign um, at the end of the season, or indeed the start of next season, to uh, fulfil that. But yeah, in terms of this is one of the things I'm slightly concerned about is um, Euro Cup reached third qualifying round. It's not going to happen. I mean, I'm in the fourth... um, Where are we? Best place qualifying round, but that doesn't say best place. So I'm not going to reach the third qualifying round um, because, like I say, we are still technically in the best place stage, which is the fourth qualifying round. I don't know if that's what then would have come next had we've beaten nine track Frankfurt, but like I say, I really don't think it's going to happen. We're 3-0 down um, from our home game, and we've only got the away game ahead of us, so I think they're going to be upset basically, because we are not hitting that uh, third qualifying round. Um, They're happy so far. Oh, but it says that it says has reached the fourth qualifying round of the Euro Cup, but I don't. Is it the same thing? They seem very pleased, so maybe I did achieve it already. Okay, well, mid table, they're very happy because, of course, we have maintained mid table at the moment, which is good. Like I say, it is only six games in, I think. Um, and working within the ba- wage budget hasn't been too much of an issue because I haven't. Oh. Oh. What happened there? All right, well, I'm not going to worry about it at this point because apparently I'm not going to hit that either. Um, But we've hit the Euro target. It's a little bit ambiguous, but we've hit the Euro target, so that's good news. The other thing I just wanted to have a chat with you or a very brief look at is uh, the injury situation in terms of, you know, the player health. Um, As you will read in the blog, the previous set of... uh, training that I used in FM19 and was going to use in this with a one or two little mods was a lot sort of uh, more intense and I suffered a lot of injuries regular injuries some of them were sort of you know small ones like these two days three days here and there but we did have some big ones too however since we started the season we have had 12 injuries thus far with an expected total to be 66 when you look at the risk assessment sorry not risk assessment the overview we got a few players are of high injury risk. Um, Emil Kalsas, because he's still coming off of uh, um, an injury that he has anyway. He's not 100% fit. But in terms of yeah, the injury history itself, um, of the three sort of major, or major, moderate, and minor, but uh, the, the, the worse are injuries, if you will, past the slight ones, um, two of them have been in training. A broken lower arm, I mean, what would you do? I don't know what happened there. It was just an accident. These things happen, I guess. Um, and gashed up a leg, same sort of thing. Back strain is just a back strain. I don't feel like necessarily any of these are training issues. But you've got tight groin, bruised ankle, tight groin, tight thigh. That's just exercise stuff. I do actually then wonder if maybe there's not enough physical... if when they're training they're getting sort of uh, tight muscles and stuff like that or we need a better physio who knows um but yeah in terms of the match injuries oh the back strain was in a match i thought that was in a that was against norshland that's fair enough okay i can i can live with that there hasn't been much and in terms of overall fitness levels there we go actually it's easier if we look at the tactics um from the side we're going to bring in now for the next game yeah, conditions close to 100%, but like I say, if you look at the schedule, it might be even easier. Oh, no, I can't see it on the calendar. If we go to the schedule, yeah. We've played a lot of games recently. We had Shakura, and then three days later, we had OB. Four days later, Rieka. Three days later, AAB. Four days later, Rieka again. Three days later, Lingby. Four days later, Eintracht Frankfurt. Frankfurt, three days later, we've got Silkeborg. So I suppose our uh, condition and fitness levels actually aren't that bad when you consider that we've, you know, we've not had more than a four-day break between games, and for the most part, it's been, you know, solid. So that's good. It's actually not as bad as I thought. I was thinking, oh, maybe it's not as good. But when you see how many games we've played, 
and what our schedule's been like. I mean, that's two games a week for an entire entirety of August. It'll be nice to be out of the Euro Cup so we can get some time off. Anyway, next up, Silkeball. Okay, it is time for Esbjerg at home to Silkeborg. In goal, it's Hoiberg, left back Lauritsen, central, <laughs> do you know what? Back four, Lauritsen, Halsty, Austin and Brinch, defensive midfield, Kalko, central midfield, Brink and Christians, Christensen, left wing, Soiri, right wing, Pervader, and up front, it's Petre. Now, Petre, he's not done bad for us. He's not done bad at all. He's had a couple of iffy games. But three appearances, three goals, two assists. He's not done bad at all. So, uh, hoping for something out of him today. It would appear that we're used to playing two up front with a 4-4-2. And it certainly is um, my second set of uh, tactics. Which you can't see at the moment because that's what we got selected. Um, so, he is used to playing up front alongside... Um, oh. Never mind. Time to go into the game. All right, I think we should call the team out to put in a better performance than last time. Well, we should, but it wasn't that their performance was bad last time, really. We were just dominated, but let's be assertive about it. Yeah, I am expecting to see a much better performance tonight. Well, that seemed to work. Go grab some goals, mate. Solid defensive work. And I want you to control the midfield. All right, let's go. So, Esberg in the blue and white with the blue shorts, and we need to go. You know what? I missed a kickoff being in uh, the whole lot. And Silkborg, Silkeborg, sorry, are in the red with the white shorts. Or oh, red and white shorts, even. Anyway, throw in for Silkeborg. Schwartz, now we are on cautious. I'm actually going to change that to positive. I meant to set that beforehand. Yak has some mass, mass up. Ball forward. Lauridsen picks it up. So here he now on the ball for Esbjerg. Oh, tries a little sneaky touch. Crone keeps it in. And they're trying to put the ball forward. Kalko coming forward. Christiansen. Christensen, sorry. Austin. I'm still getting used to the name. Brinch. I don't feel like... There we go. Let's run at the defence a bit. And in fact, you know what? I should put that back where it was. Just put pass into space. Because we're not really making the progress I'd like to see. And I don't mind them putting balls forward in front of the wide men especially. As they are prone to do, Brink on the ball now for Esberg. Puts it out wide to Sawiri. There we go. We're looking a bit more attacking now. He's got support. Lauridsen with the cross. And oh my goodness. Counter-attack from Silkeborg. Oh no, Brinch has got it. Christensen. Oh, he's tackled. Brinch again. Austin puts a wide ball out. Which Sawiri couldn't get onto for some reason. Or didn't appear to try. Anyway, throw in for Silkeborg. I'm going to go on the key highlights. We're not looking bad. Jakobsen, Massup. Like I say, I'm, I'm really keen to get some uh, more consistent central defenders. Uckles, wow, he's just run in and he's tried a very tight shot. Very tight shot that gone across the goal, but nobody touched it, apparently. Throw in for Esberg. Petre, Hatsi, Christensen, ball in, cleared. Kalko going to get that one? No. Oh, they're on a counter-attack now. Schwartz is there. He's one-on-one, -on -one, is he? Oh. He had a go. But uh, looks like Hoiberg got a hand to it. Corner kick now. Cleared only as far as Ockles. Oh, and he's fouled by Lauridsen. Are we going in too hard again? Yes. Let's just tighten, mark him a bit tighter. And I think we should possibly go a bit wider on the defensive width. Okay. Short passing play it is. And I will bring down the tempo. There we go. I'm going to go with the run at defence. Because we did start to do that. And I'm going to say... Let's get creative. Come on, Esbjerg. 
I feel like we're playing like we're 1-0 up when we're not. Ball forward. Oh dear. Did he get knocked down? Well, it wasn't a foul anyway. Silkabor, Ockles, finding Moller out on the wing. Come on, boys, close them down. At least we're defending wider now. Hebo, Rochester, puts the ball out wide. And there was nobody on that guy, Crone. Hebo, Crone with the cross, Brinch. He finds Paveda, Paveda now on the counter-attack. He's giving it legs, he's right through. And, well... He was probably knackered at that point, having run three quarters of the pitch, but uh, that shot was not to be. Um, yeah, looking like our performances aren't great. I wonder if I should just demand more. I had Paveda in FM19. There's Niak with the corner for Silka Ball. Oh my goodness! Oh. It was good at. Yeah. Ronnie Schwartz is finding too much space. You don't say. So. Cleared by Brinch, but only as far as Schwartz, and Schwartz hammers it home. He might be somebody we want on our side. I'm just going to scout him. 400,000. We'll never afford it. And he's 29. Long shot, though. Look at that. That's what we want. That's what we want. For people who are going to be hanging around outside the box. Throw in for Esberg. It's coming up to half time. Lauridsen, our top free kick taker and corner taker. Kauko. You're not having a strong one, are you, really, mate? Well, no, it's a 6.8. Good work, Hoiberg. Hoiberg, sorry. Oh. I don't think we were very good. And I think that's my fault. I think that... Well, we had four shots on, two on target, compared to their eight and five. Um, and we've had just slightly less possession. I'm not too worried about that, but... Let's go back in and tell him to pick the game up because that wasn't very good. Please, please be better in the second half. But look, you know, rubbish centre halves. It's just. Let's try that. I got faith. Okay, I'm just going to go look at the tactics. Petro is not doing bad, so he can stay as he is, but it. Pervada and Sawiri are just doing rubbish. I'm going to put... I'm going to bring on Egerland for Pervada. But I'm going to put Egerland over on the left. And I put Sawiri on the right. Just because in pre-season, when he played out there, he actually did quite well. Though, obviously, he is at a 6.4, and that's rare to overcome that. Um, what can you do? Halstead's got to go. You see, that's the other problem as well. When your captain plays rubbish, the whole team plays rubbish. Come on, Tramberg. Yeah, I well, I mean, oh, actually, you see, that's the other thing I could do. Let's put Egelin back right. Let's take Sawiri off for Roikia. Because Roikia is a bit handy there on the left. And that's three subs. At half time. Don't really like to do that if I can avoid it. Start and let's go. Show some passion. Check the analyses. Yeah. Yepa Brinch needs to ease off tackles. Corner for Esberg. Eglin picks up the loose ball. Tramberg. Back heel. We're not getting any further forward. We're just going further back. Brinch. Austin. Come on, Esbjerg. Kauko. Korko. I need to look at that one. Egland. It just doesn't feel like we're going to score. I didn't get excited at all because I'm like, he's in a bad position. He's not going to try and cross it. Lauridsen. Shorty to Egland. Egland. <laughs> See what he's trying to do, but uh, that did not work. You know what? We're getting rid of that. We're doing that. You know what? Early crosses. There we go. Schwartz on the counter-attack. Full silk boy. He's been solid today. Roy Kiar. No. Lauridsen. And we'll never know. But more, more. Come on, Esbjerg. we got time. we got acres of time. And why is Roy Kiar playing badly? Romo with the goal kick for silk boy. Silk boy. 
I like Crone. I'm going to have to scout him. Massup. Lesniak. Hebo. I'm going to go back to Cautious. Oh. Cross from Crone. Finds Mahili. And it's Silkabor to Esberg nil. Well, that's only a second go. I mean, you know, again, can't fault it, can you? Puts the cross. Yeah. Straight onto his head. He takes a couple of steps back. What are you going to do? I'll demand more, but Brinch with a throw in. Egland, Christensen, Egland still. Brinch now. Christensen. Egland's in the box. Oh, Petre just puts it wide. Good effort. Petri. Petre. Well, we had 12 shots, 7 on target to their 10 and 7, and yet we're still 2 0 down. I mean, there's obviously. Roy Kiar's playing just terrible. I mean, it's there's no time left. I don't think there's any real point in doing that. But nevertheless, we will. Goal kick. Finds Finter. Hebo for Silk Boar. Schwartz has a little cheeky header. It's coming up to the 92. There you go. We're done. It's over. We were awful. Esberg nil. Silk Boar. Two. 15 shots. Eight on target. 52% of possession, but... So, there's work to be done. You lot are getting yelled at. That's the first thing. There are no excuses for not winning that. None. Okay, let's have a quick review after that terrible, terrible performance against Silkabor. We're in eighth. We've dropped a couple of spots. That's not too surprising. And Silkabor are, of course, above us. Um, remember Bronby, who had a terrible start to the season? They're above us now, too. Uh, they've uh, obviously picked things up. Um, so, yeah, in terms of our schedule now moving forward, we've obviously got this uh, Eintracht Frankfurt game, which we're going to get hammered in. So, morale's going to be a bit iffy. But at least next month is going to be a normal month. There's only going to be one week with two games, which will be whatever the uh, Pokerland third round um, cup game, whoever our opponents are. So, yeah, we're going to... I mean, we've not, like I say, we've not done awful in the league. It's just that uh, our last two games have been fairly heavy defeats. I mean, we shouldn't have gotten, shouldn't have been beaten by Sokopol, to be fair. We, we should be better, but I'm, we've clearly got a bit of a hangover, and obviously it's been so many games. So many games. So, yeah, I'm glad we reached our uh, target with the board, and I'm glad we're not going to be in Europe for uh, much longer, because, crikey, look at that. Just look at it. As I say, every week, two games. Going back this far, do you know what I mean? Going back to uh, July. It's way, way too many. Um, so yeah, I'll stop complaining about it, however, because like I say, it's uh, all over. We haven't got that bigger squad. I mean, when you leave out the... Uh, oh no, that is the senior squad. Maybe it's bigger than I thought it was. But nevertheless, we don't have too much quality depth. Especially at the back. Anyway. We'll be back in September. Um, I think I'm actually going to come back for the uh, third round of the Cup. I think that'll be a fun one. We'll see who it's up against. And hopefully you'll see us win something. Because uh, that was a terrible, terrible... What should have been a, a victory was a terrible, terrible defeat. Um, but well done to Silkeborg. And uh, if you enjoyed that, please do give me a thumbs up. And subscribe for more Football Manager videos. Thank you very much for watching.